So the current topic is exceptions and exception handling. Exceptions and exception handling. So exception is different, exception handling is different. So anyway, we'll discuss about what is exception, what is error, and the classifications of errors and classification, classification of exceptions we'll discuss later. But in the overall exceptions topic, we will deal with five clauses and entire exception class hierarchy I'll explain you. We'll deal with five clauses in exception and we'll deal with all the exception classes in the hierarchy. The five clauses used in the exceptions are throw, throws, throw is different, throw, throws is different. Try is different, catch is different, finally is different. Throw arranges exception, throws reports exception, try monitors exception, catch handles exception. Finally is only a block that is written in every method that executes at the end of the method execution. In every method, if you write finally block at the end of the method, that will execute uh, at the end of every method's execution. And with that, we'll discuss later. We'll discuss about this class also later. Before discussing these topics, we are having a lot of things to discuss here. So my, here is my here I'm having a doubt. The doubt is. We often use two words in uh, the programming when we compile and run Java programs. When we compile and run the programs, we often come with two terms. One is error and other one is exception. Error and exception. Whenever you write a program, you compile it, you run it, you will come across these two terms, error and exception. How error and exception are different? Coming to the error, suppose if you write a wrong syntax in the program, if the program will compile successfully, if you write something wrong in the program, if the program compiles successfully, for example, you forgot to put semicolon at the end of the statement, you forgot to include the blocks of code in the floor basis, like for example, class should be enclosed in the floor basis, constructor should be enclosed in the floor basis, method should be enclosed in the floor basis, condition should be enclosed in the floor basis, uh, iteration loop should be en enclosed in the fl uh, floor basis, floor basis open and close. Try, catch, finally, all these blocks must be enclosed in floor basis. If you don't write syntax properly, will that program be compiled? No. So they are all called as uh, compilation errors. They are all called as errors. So here also we are having two types of errors. Compile time errors, runtime errors. And we, we don't discuss about exceptions right now. Compile time errors, we'll discuss first of all. If you do any syntactical mistakes in the program, that causes compile time errors. So what syntactical mistakes we do? Okay, from my programming uh, knowledge, I've written a couple of points about what syntactical mistakes we may do. So improper use of open and closed floor bases, closed floor, improper use of open and closed floor bases. Wherever floor bases are supposed to use, there, there they must be used. Wherever they should not be used, there we should not use. It. So improper use or uh, use of open and closed floor bases for class, constructor, method, condition, loop and you know, previously I said some exception clauses. Improper use of data types and variable declarations. You declare a variable of something different type and assign value of different type. So if you declare double variable and assign boolean value, if you declare boolean variable and assign some character. So this is wrong, right? And um, declaring, if you declare long value and assign integer value, it's okay. If you declare into variable and assign a long value, again, so it's a compilation error. Improper use of data types and variable declarations. Improper variable initializations. That's what I'm saying. So the variable declared with which data type and its value assigned, 
both should match. So that one. And wrong use of class name and package name. So in Java, there are so many predefined packages and classes. In our application, we'll also write our own packages and classes. So if you spell any, uh, if you import any package name wrong, if you import any class name wrong, if you in import any uh, wrong class name or package name, immediately compiler says uh, the package is not found, the class is not found. This is most commonly, you know, uh, notice the error statements in Java compilation. Improper variable uh, initialization, improper termination of statement with a semicolon symbol. Uh, which statements are terminated with semicolon symbol? Variable declarations are terminated with semicolon symbol. Variable initializations are terminated with semicolon symbol. And any statement written, something like system dot 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 pindle, or any object dot method calling statement, all method calling statements should end with semicolon. All object creations must end with semicolon. Written statements must be or in statement written at the end of the method, that should be done with semicolon. Variable declaration, variable initialization, object creation, any object dot method calling, a written statement, they are all must terminate with a semicolon. The next improper use of single quotation and double quotation. Character should be enclosed in single quotation, string should be placed in double quotation. It should not be changed. Hmm? Improper array declaration, initialization, accessing. Suppose if you uh, and, uh, like uh, improper declaration or initialization and accessing. Accessing is different, improper declaration and and uh, initialization. And, uh, like for example, if you, <laughs> this may not be a compilation error. Suppose if you declare one int array size of uh, uh, 10, int array size of 10 and uh, If you declare a size of 10 from 0th index to index number 9, you can initialize values. Values will be initialized. You iterate one for loop, retrieve each index value from the array. In that case, you use one integer variable every time you start its index from 0 and every time you increase the value by 1, we know for loop syntax and pass its integer as argument into that array, uh, into that array, what we call array index. Uh, we will pass error indexes in square bracket. Right? There you pass the integer variable whose index exceeds the last index of the array. That causes only a random exception but not compile time error. That cannot be detected compile time. But array declaration if anything wrong or initialization is if anything wrong or accessing is if anything wrong directly if you do anything wrong then immediately they will be noticed as a compilation. Improper method declarations. Calling the method with improper signature. Writing method signature, writing method itself is wrong. Hmm. Or while calling the method, if you pass improper arguments into the method, calling method with improper signature, that also causes a compilation. Wrong use of constructor. See, no parameter constructor is there, two parameter constructor is there. No parameter constructor is not there in the class, two parameter constructor is there. But when you are creating object, you know, you use no argument constructor. Because that is not there, so you will get an error. So overriding final methods, that you should not do. You should not derive from final classes, you should not override final methods. Not implementing abstract methods. Not implementing abstract methods in subclasses. And writing implementation to abstract methods is wrong. Not implementing abstract methods in subclasses is also wrong. Deriving from final classes, instantiating abstract classes, deriving from multiple classes, that should should not do. No, it's Java. It supports only multi-level inheritance, not multiple inheritance. So, if you commit to any, and if from my programming knowledge, I gathered some of the points. Um, I recalled and wrote these uh, points. Maybe you can add something more also regarding the entirety mistakes. If any of these mistakes uh, occur, then we need to rectify and uh, the error and recompile the class again. This is about compilation error. Compilation error. Compilation error. And coming to the runtime error, generally errors are raised only at compilation time. If you write something wrong, uh, naturally you will get a compilation error. That same column is missing, a array you are improperly accessing, wrong method you are calling, method is not there, package is not there, class is not there, that, 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 that they are natural. So all syntactical mistakes are cause, causes to 
compilation error you must rectify them and recompile the class class will be recompiled how come an error is uh, how come an error raises at runtime so in my knowledge you know errors are always at compile time and it is but not runtime and it is right how come errors will come at runtime so there are some ideas where um this is absolutely a blunder that one should not do suppose you write one class called a in the a you declare a and b to variables in this you write one m1 method and one m2 method observe carefully and you write class b somewhere in the public static void me create object of a and you compile this class java c a dot java a a is equal to new a so with this a object reference what all i can call a dot a variable i can call a dot b variable i can call a dot m1 method i can call a dot m2 method i can call so compile and run b dot java in java b if you compile and run class b because a variable is there b variable is there m1 and m2 methods are there so the, the the class will be successfully compiled the b class will be successfully compiled and executed as well after execution of java b after execution of class b you open class a you open class a and the class b is depending on the class a past variables and methods are used by b now you open class a remove this a variable remove this m1 remove this a variable and remove this m1 method and recompile only a dot java recompile only a dot java you recompile only class a now class a is compiled and is having only one variable int b and having only one method m2 but here the java class b is compiled and b and java class java class b is compiled and executed they are executed on the first version of class a that time variable a and m1 are also existent b and m2 methods are also exist now recently the class a is opened in a and m1 methods are removed due to some uh, due to some requirement we found those methods are not performing well or became outdated that is why in java once a written variable or function in class should not be removed they must be deprecated they must be marked as deprecated but should not be removed that this this kind of things will never happen in java usually especially from java it so if you open in a class a and remove a variable in method and compile it at java and after that if you run java b once again if you compile java c b dot java it again notices that a, a, a variable is not there m1 is not there please remove it says we are not recompiling b after recompiling a we are just only executing b when i am executing b at run time b class notices that in a class a variable is not there in a class m1 method is not there so what is this is this is a run time error or compile time error it's a run time error so such type of errors are called as no such field error no such class error no such method error or completely a dot java and a dot class are removed completely but you run java b you will get no class error hmm? 
So these three belongs to such type of errors. And coming to the class formatter, you compile a Java program on JDK 1.8 higher version. You run it on JDK 1.4 or 1.5 because some old projects, uh, old projects uh, implemented Java uh, some 15, 20 years ago. Still, they run on JDK 1.4 or 1.5. Their application runs um, stable. So they don't want to change the Java compiler. We, we frequently change the JDK versions in our system developers and students, faculty. We frequently change, uh, get update with uh, all the latest databases, latest programming language versions, latest web servers. Everything we we'll use latest, latest ID we we'll use. But products once uh, developed and released in the market, uh, still they run on the old versions of the pro databases, old versions of web servers, old versions of the programming language. So if you compile on JDK 1.8 and try to run on JDK 1.4, JDK 1.4 the forward compatibility will be there. And the 1.4 compiled code may run on 1.8, but 1.8 compiled code may or may not run on the 1.4 or 1.5. So this will cause you know class formatter. That if your compiled code cannot be understood by your Java. Uh, interpreter, or maybe it's a lower version, then you will get a class formatter. Some class version error, class formatter, class version error you will get actually class version error, it is not class formatter. Class formatter is something different. Class circular, um, circularity error, unsatisfied link error, no class default error, class version error, some, some different related to class, some class errors are there. So there are also runtime errors. Okay? We use latest uh, software for uh, development and compilation of the code, but we run on a older versions. So these all class versions, so class format, all these errors will come. If your program, if your Java class is using any DLL file, calling a function in the DLL file, the DLL file is not available. You'll get unsatisfied link error. Suppose you are connecting to a printer, scanner, webcam, or any electronic device connected to your machine. You are connecting through Java program. The time if that uh, uh, product drivers and your Java functions doesn't link, unsatisfied link error will come. Like that. So, if these errors comes, what to do? Nothing we can do. We need to change the JDK version, or we need to uh, recompile the code in the older version of JDK. Or in in the case of class B, we cannot do anything. That's it. If class A is completely removed or if one variable and one method is removed from A and A, if A is recompiled, what can uh, B uh, uh, can do? B also should remove calling that A variable and uh, M one method and recompile and rerun again. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is nothing we can do to solve this problem. So that is about printer methods. Probably that example is written here. Out of memory error, stack overflow error. These are some of the common errors uh, that raises in the program. You know, we run Java program. Sometimes we get out of memory error. The variables used in the program may exceeds uh, uh, their memory occupation more than what the memory is available at your JV. So what we can do is if you get uh, out of memory error, one uh, solution I can give you is you can increase at least under this is one trial if program can run, it can run, otherwise it, it may not run. So if you want to increase the um, heap size of the program, actually in the Java uh, interpreter and uh, in the JVM launcher command, the JVM launcher command, hyphen server, hyphen client options are given. Hyphen server will launch server JVM. Hyphen client will launch client JVM. So for the server JVM and client JVM, some default, uh, some minimum and maximum heap uh, uh, memory was set by the Java interpreter. And the Sun Microsystem, they, they set some minimum and maximum heap size for the server and client JVM. Otherwise, if you want to give minimum and maximum heap size on your own, and then what you need to do is Java hyphen XMS, and hyphen capital letter X, MS monitors, hyphen XMS 16 M, and 16 MB megabytes. 
Similarly, hyphen x mx and the maximum heap size. Some 64 m and don't give mb, just give m. For kb, give k. For mb, give m. And then you give your class name. Then what happens? Your Java class will run with this much of heap size. If you are interested, you can increase more or reduce. Only for your Java class running, the GV minimum and maximum heap size will change. For the remaining programs, the default heap size will be used. Similarly, some stack overflow errors. So, stack overflow error, uh, with a runtime error in Java, it is thrown when the amount of call stack method allocated by JVM is exceeded. A common case of the stack overflow error being thrown is when call stack exceeds due to excessive deep of infinite regressions. Okay. Some programmatically, if you write any iterations that exceeds more than the uh, capacity of the stack. Then this type of stack of errors will come. That is about errors. Compile time errors, syntactical errors, runtime errors, as we discussed. Now, the main topic in here in this Java, uh, in, in this topic is exception. Tell me, is error stages at compile time or runtime? If you forget about runtime errors, most of the syntax errors causes always a compilation error. So, so errors mostly occur at compile time, but not at runtime. Runtime very few worst cases like a class version error, class format error, no such class variable or method error. They are different, but mostly we should treat errors as a compile time errors only. And because of mostly by doing some syntactical mistakes only in the program we will be committed to compilation errors. So, errors are always at compile time in the days. They must be rectified, recompile the class, then they will be successfully compiled. The class will be successfully compiled. Coming to the exception, exception is always a runtime entity. No exception raises at compile time. Exceptions always raises at runtime. So, you may ask me, what is the exception? In the program, if any abnormal situation happens in the program, if any abnormal situation happens, such all abnormal situations are treated as exceptions. Abnormal situation, something like uh, you write a logic, uh, the logic which you write, uh, your compiler notices that the syntax is correct. Whatever your logic you write, the logic syntax is correct. Syntax is correct. If Syntax is correct, you know, compiler will compare your program. But the logic which you write, that may not be executed at runtime. For example, you declare int size 10, int array size 10, you need to access index from 0 to 9, but you are trying to access index number 10, what happens? Then to programmatically into that array variable, uh, some you pass some i, whose value is increasing from 0, it should go up to less than 10, but you said 10, mistakenly, mistakenly or intention, whatever. So, 0 to 9 iterations will successfully execute and, uh, and index number 10 execution when comes, immediately you will get an exception, saying that uh, your runtime environment cannot proceed from where to get this index number 10 for an array size of 10, because whose index numbers can limit from 0 to 9, but not 10, 10 means uh, index number 10 means it's a 11th element. From from an array size of 10, how come the 11th element can be retrieved? So, this kind of abnormal problem will be uh, noticed by your runtime environment at runtime. They are called as you know, exceptions. Similarly, we will take something from the standard input. Mm, in the main method, we are having arcs, right? <laughs> Through command line argument, we are taking some name, your age, the qualification, something like that. Or through command line argument, we are taking your name. Or through command line argument, we are taking your age. Whenever we are taking your name from the command line argument, is from the command line argument. So, you may be asking me, is input always taken into program in Java or always from or always taken from the command line argument? 
from command line argument you can take from scanner plus you can take if they are standard programs but in java the percentage of standard programs are very very less most of the java programs are server side executable programs so server side executable programs something like servlets jsp there are another website they will get the request from the browser uh if not uh, um, it may be a distributed application um some java ejb component may get request from a remote system or it may be a spring component spring web may be a component it also gets a request from the web browser sometimes your component may be a rest to service component your request may come through a http protocol directly the arguments will comes into your method see the input comes from various ways from the browser using http protocol or from any testing to something like postman or from command line argument or from standard input scanner system dot in so from any means but whenever i am taking your input some you are when i am when i am asking your name and your age you entered your name properly you entered your age instead of entering your age as 20 you entered something like 20 or a20 20 or a20 something like that you entered something not an integer value it's half a numeric value or only alphabetical value you might have entered so what to do so when i'm taking your a is from the command line argument what i'll do to convert it into int to convert it into int i'll use one wrapper class method called integer dot parse int integer dot parse int arcs of one but your a is consists of alpha numeric value alpha numeric value cannot be converted into int at run time the integer dot parse int method notices that the entered string containing value does does not only contain a numeric value it contains some also also numeric value or alphabetical value so it cannot parse your string into int so it causes number format exception Number four exception. This will cause array index out of bounds exception. Out of bounds exception. Like that. The the Java program due to some logic or due to some input or something syntax is correct, but at runtime your runtime environment notices that the input you are giving into the program cannot be processed. the logic which i have written may not be executed there the program may stops execution then there are all will be expressed as you know exceptions so any abnormal condition raised in the program at run time abnormal condition raised in the program at run time at run time is an exception exceptions are always a cause of run time fine we learned about what an exception is in brief we learned about what an exception is in brief but in in the exceptions also we are having two types of exceptions in the exceptions also we are having two types of exceptions checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions in the exceptions also exceptions are classified into two types checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions checked exceptions are compile time checked exceptions are compile time detected exceptions see exception always raises at run time no doubt exception always raises at run time exception always raises at run time but in the program sometimes some mechanisms may detect that an exception may raises at run time will be detected at the time of compilation time itself are getting point there are some mechanisms written in the program they can detect or they can predict that some exception may raises at run time will be detected and informed to us at compile time itself they are called as you know compile time detected exceptions or checked exceptions and other categories unchecked exceptions are run time detected exceptions some exceptions causes in your program they may not be detected at the time of compilation they will directly be experienced at run time itself so they are called as unchecked exceptions because they cannot be checked at compile time so if that exception comes program abnormality remains 
at least if an exception raises at run time, if that will be detected at compilation time and one to us, we'll write some exception and we'll put some prevention code. Suddenly, if exception raises at run time, which cannot be predicted at compile time, and if suddenly comes at run time, the program abnormally terminates. Then how to handle them through a experience? Through a experience. Each and every statement when you're writing in Java, as a developer, we should have a past experience to um, predict ourselves, to detect ourselves whether this statement will cause any runtime exception or not. And based on the experience, we have to write the exception handling code. But some exceptions will be detected at compile time. Some exceptions may not be detected at compile time, but they always raise at runtime. Exceptions always raise at runtime. But some are detected compile time, some may not be detected at compile time. So based on that, the exceptions are classified into second and unchecked exceptions. Okay. Unchecked exceptions are array index out of bounds exception, null point exception, arithmetic exception, number format exception, illegal argument exception. As previous slide said, your array size is 10, you access index from 0 to 9. But if you're trying to access a index number up to 10, an index out of bounds exception come. And you write string str. String str. Declare string str is a uh, class instance variable. What is the default value assigned to class references? Null. Inside the method, you are trying to access string dot length. On null, on null value, if you are trying to call d method, you will get a null point exception. And arithmetic exception. Anything divided by 0 causes an arithmetic exception. Number format exception previously said converting, trying to convert an alphanumeric value into into value is a number format exception. And a method is taking age from 10 years to 90 years, but you passed 8 years as argument into method or 1 or 2 years as argument into method. But if method is expecting an int, but that int value must be within the range of 10 to 90, let us assume, that is one condition. But you pass is 8 or is 1 or 2, then what happens? That will cause illegal argument exception. Best example is in threads. We set priority. In threads, we set priority, minimum priority, normal priority, maximum priority. Yesterday, somewhere in the final, somewhere in one topic, I had discussed about that. Constant variable. Yeah. Uh, in the set priority method, thread dot set priority, you need to pass minimum priority, normal priority, or maximum priority. Minimum priority is 1, normal priority is 5, maximum priority is 10. And then, whenever you are writing threads and running the threads, before just starting the thread, thread object dot, you can give a priority by just calling dot set priority of. You need to give value between 1 to 10. If you give value less than 1 or above 10, what happens? That is an illegal argument exception. So, by experience, you know, you learn how to, I mean, uh, you yourself can detect where exception comes. Unchecked exceptions raises at runtime, but are not detected at compile time because of user input wrong or user written logic is wrong. User input wrong or user written logic may be wrong because of that. Unchecked exceptions always raises. No compiler or any mechanism can detect unchecked exceptions at compile time. They are raised at runtime, but they cannot be detected compile time. Such exceptions are raised at runtime. Developers must experience unchecked exceptions and must handle such exceptions through exception handling. Only developer experience matters. So here is one. String student number is equal to 123. Integer passing of SNO. There is a there. Here after 123, we left one blank space. If you close double quotation immediately after 3, number will be converted. But after 3, we gave one blank space and then we close double quotation. So, because it's having an alphabet here, we will get number one exception. Int i is equal to 10, j is equal to 0, i by j, 10 by 0, arithmetic exception. Int error size is 3, 0, 1, 2, it's okay. And the values are assigned. 3 means 0, 1, 2 indexes, 3 values. But in the for loop, for j is equal to j, 0, j is less than or equal to i dot length. And j is starting from 0, j is going up to i dot length means 3, less than or equal to. 
అంటే జీరో వన్ టూ ఇట్స్ ఓకే ట్రెండ్ యాక్సిస్ ఇండెక్స్ నెంబర్ త్రీ దట్ మీన్స్ ఇట్స్ ఫోర్త్ ఎలిమెంట్ బట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఓన్లీ త్రీ హౌ కమ్ దిస్ ఇండెక్స్ నెంబర్ త్రీ కెన్ బి యాక్సెస్ ఫ్రమ్ ఇన్ ఎరేస్ ఐజ్ త్రీ ఇట్స్ అ ఫోర్త్ ఎలిమెంట్ సో ఇట్ ఇమీడియట్లీ కాల్ చేస్తే అంటే డ్యూరింగ్ ఫోర్త్ ఇటరేషన్ యూ విల్ గెట్ ఎరే ఇండెక్స్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ బౌన్స్ వి అండర్స్టూడ్ హౌ ద అన్సెక్రెడ్ ఎక్సెప్షన్స్ కమింగ్ టు ద సెక్రెడ్ ఎక్సెప్షన్ సి here integer dot parsing method cannot uh, you know predict that the user in, because it honestly asks us to pass only valid string as argument so that it will convert into integer it, it cannot detect it uh, compile time that the argument passed into my method may cause this exception turn time if it feels dot like that for every input it it it, it, it feels a dot and who knows that somebody writes uh, um, uh, zero in the denominator portion of the division it is absolutely uh, um, user input wrong or developer may mistakenly write uh, uh, logic wrong so, and similarly the array size size is 3 but you are trying to access index number 3 with that means fourth element that is also a random exception uh, unchecked exception unchecked exception exception is a random but these exceptions cannot be detected completely but some exceptions are detected it completely how how means how exception raises at run time can be detected it completely for that the example is by writing java program we use so many classes relating java program we use so many number of classes one of the most frequently used class in my knowledge is from the java.io package we use one class called file input stream to read the file we we'll use two classes one is file input stream to read the file or random access file this class is also used to read the file in the file input stream you need to give some file which is already present in your hard disk even in the random access file also you need to give the file name as argument and whether you want to open random access while using read mode or read write, read write mode <laughs> using file input stream or random access file we are giving some file name our intention is to read that file through as this file input stream because file input stream class is having one method called file input stream dot again random access file is having a method name called read line various methods methods can be any so the intention is through a file input stream or random access file we are trying to point to some file and we want to read content from the file so this program is executed on one system wherever this program is executed on one system the developer machine on that machine this file is available developer distributed this program to some client or faculty shared this program to student or developer shared this program to client in the development machine this file is present the file input stream or random access was successfully executed the file content was returned and displayed same application was shipped from one machine to another machine to the developer or to the student the program was given but developer or faculty forgot to share this file name also this file also to them so this program was shared and they were trying to execute when they are trying to execute because in that in their machine this file is not there so immediately they will get file not found exception is file not found exception is file not found exception raised on the client or student's machine or on the developer or faculty's machine raised on the developer or uh, sorry student or client's machine because the file is not present that exception raises at run time on their machine but while developer are using this file input stream or random access file he is passing file name here in the program whenever you use file input stream class file name is argument immediately file input stream class was written in such a way that if the given file name is available it is fine If the file name is not available in the current hard disk what to do file input stream will internally return the code in such a way if file name is present 
file name is present, then it will keep quiet. Else, else, and this file will put simple as else, it will throw new one exception called file not found exception. What it will throw? File input same class constructor internally checks whether if whether this file is available in the machine or not. If the file is not present in the machine, immediately it throws file not found exception. That is how the logic is written in the file input stream. The file input stream class constructor is already written with the logic that may one day come to this throw statement. This file not found exception may raise. The logic is written in the file input stream class. It doesn't mean that at the time of compilation time this exception comes. The logic is written in such a way that whether it may be a developer machine or a client machine or a faculty machine or a student machine, the logic is written in such a way that this file input stream class constructor knows one day if the file is not present, find out for an exception. Exception is thrown. Why not for an exception like this? So, file input stream class constructor feels the responsibility that because my logic is written in such a way that my logic is throwing file not found exception, it is my responsibility to tell to the developers that whenever you are using me, the file input stream class constructor, it immediately says, it immediately reports throws, using throws class, it immediately reports saying that file not found exception. And in the file input stream class, while writing the constructor, you know, they'll write throws file not for exception. So when developer is reading file input sim class constructor string name as a parameter, besides that he immediately he notices throws file not for exception. Whenever de developer notices throws file not for exception, the developer should immediately notice that whenever I am using this constructor, the constructor is reporting me that it will throw file not for exception. So whenever I am using that file input sim class constructor, I should write some try catch block to handle the file not for exception. If client, if developer don't, though he sees that throws file not found exception beside file input stream class constructor, but if he still ignores to put try catch block for a file input stream class constructor, and if still developer ignores to put file input stream class constructor this under this calling statement in a try catch block, the exception ending block, then immediately compiler. You compile the program, compiler immediately detects saying that. File input sim class constructor is already reporting a file not found exception that is already given in the API. As a developer, you must have noticed it. Though you notice or you don't notice, because you are not handling a file not found exception in your program while using file input sim, wherever you are using file input sim class constructor, there you are not and because you are not handling exception. So immediately I am forcing you, you please handle the file input sim class constructor that block. With a file not found exception, uh, exception handler. <laughs> so compiler will force us to handle file not found exception wherever uh, we are using file input sim class constructor. Right? Exception raises at none time, but because file input sim class reported as, if you don't put it in a try catch block, if you don't handle the exception, compiler will force you to put your block of code in a exception handling block, try catch block with file not found exception. And then it allows us you to compile. If you don't put file input stream class that uses statement in try catch block, your program will not be compiled. And in Java, whenever you we are using some one some constructors or methods, those constructors and methods they know the their logic internally. When they, the developer who wrote the who writes the constructor or who writes the method, he himself is the responsible. The developer who is writing the constructors or methods. Under some circumstances, they'll throw, they'll throw some exception. So whenever uh, the developer is writing constructor or method, and uh, under some condition, if they throw exception, they throw exception throw via using throw class throw new that exception class constructor. And wherever they are writing throw new the exception class object when when they are throwing, immediately the, beside the method, you know they'll put throws under whatever exceptions they are throwing in the method. They'll immediately report it in the method with the help of throws class. The beside, after parenthesis of the method, they'll write throws and all the exception names. They'll write in the, with the comma separator. It is the develop. It is the developer responsibility who is writing constructors and methods. 
it is his responsibility or his, her responsibility to mention all the exceptions whatever they are raising in the method they should report it in the method using throws class if they don't do it is their mistake it is if you, if they don't do it is their mistake and once if they report as a developer though we see that they are the, though they are reporting exception without handling exception if you try to use their constructor method the compiler will force us to put that block of code in try to exploit compiler will force us to handle exception but anyway exception raises at runtime but exception raises at runtime but except and the file input same class constructor says that exception may raise it at runtime it will report it at the time of compilation time itself if you don't put it in try catch like at least compiler will force you to put that block of code in try catch block so that is what called as you know secret exception and the exceptions are secret at compile time and it 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 happened because of not because of logic it it all happened runtime exception causes because of wrong logic or wrong input and secret exceptions are caused and at secret exceptions are detected at compile time because of the constructors and methods which we are using if they report us to handle exception if you don't handle the exception then compiler will force us to handle the exception so that is what secret exceptions and one more important point is in java there is a hierarchy హారాకి from exception all secret exceptions we named like malform new york exception file not found exception io exception socket exception unknown host exception class not found exception bind exception socket bind exception port is already used by somebody else you are trying to bind to the same port through a server socket bind exception sql exception your sql command is wrong or database connectivity is failed servlet exception these are all secret exceptions all secret exception classes are derived from exception class and from the exception class one more class is derived the class name is runtime exception runtime exception classes derived from runtime exception are all called as unchecked exception classes derived from runtime exception are called as unchecked exceptions all checked exceptions are directly derived from exception class as a developer when you write your own exception you have to decide whether your class want to be a subclass of exception or your class want to be a runtime exception that you have to choose on your own there is no standard processor or book ml anywhere saying that the, i mean in this context you use you derive class from uh, exception or you derive class from that exception the, the, as i told you, you know if you do any logical or input wrong there are all kind of exceptions and uh, unsecured exceptions and if you use any constructor or the predefined constructor or method of java ip in your program when they report exception if you don't handle them there are checked exceptions you see this is how in the file input same class extends input same in the file input same class constructor should pass string file name as a parameter inside that if file name not found it is throwing throw new file not found exception file name not found so because file input same class constructor inside file input same class constructor we are writing check we are checking this condition if the condition file name is not found because we are throwing file not found exception file input same class constructor feels the responsibility it just throws file not found exception so developer when who is who is using this file input same class should notice that this constructor is reporting file not found exception it should handle that is the exception handler if they don't do they'll get compilation error 
So when are you using file input seam class constructor, you must handle file not found exception. When are you re calling read method file input seam dot read? File input seam dot read will continuously read the characters from the file, but how long? Until the end of the file. Once if the cursor reaches to the end of the file, when there are no further bytes to read from the file, then which exception comes? I/O exception comes. For the read method, read method reports I/O exception. File input seam class constructor reports. File not found exception. And other than this uh, IO exception or file not found exception, if any other exception raises, for that sake we are putting, you know, and for the safe side, we are writing catch exception, catch throuble. And other than exception, if error comes in the program, who knows? So catch throuble will handle the exception. And what is the way of handling the exception in Java is the exception suspected code should be kept in try flower basis flower basis code in the flower block try block followed by unitrate multiple catch blocks with each exception whatever exceptions we are suspecting here or these constructor methods are reporting with each one we unitrate one 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 catch block one one catch block this is called as exception handling whichever exception there is the matching catch block will execute remaining catch blocks will be ignored Program execution will be successful. Program will not abnormally terminate. If you don't try try catch block, if exception comes, program abnormally terminates. Now, before ending up this topic, we'll discuss about how to write our own exception classes, how to throw our own exceptions, how to report those exceptions to the client, how client handles those exceptions. All that we'll learn in this example. And user defined exceptions and exception handling. Here I'm writing one class called public class not allowed to swim exception. Not allowed to swim exception. From which class I'm extending from? I'm extending from exception class. What does it mean? What does it mean by not allowed to swim exception? This exception, and in my guess, this exception raises suppose if a person wants to swim. His age should be about 10 or 15 years. Then only he is eligible for swimming. And age should not uh, exceed 65. 60 to 65. Max is. The person above 60 or 65 are not allowed. The person below 10 or 15 years is not allowed to swim the exception. The person should physically be fit to swim. If he is not physically fit or generally based on the age, you know, we are writing a condition, if any one of these matches, immediately we will we'll not allow the user to swim and to take the admission to swim. So such a one class was written, it's a checked exception because it extends from exception class. In every exception class, we must declare one string error variable. The variable name can be anything, but one string variable must be declared to store error messages. One no parameter constructor must be written. And one string parameter constructor must be written. And in every exception class, two constructors must be at a minimum we must write two constructors. One no parameter constructor and one string parameter constructor. Why two? Because if developer is if developer uses this no uh, parameter constructor, we should print some default messages on our own. And if user uses this not allowed to swim exception, we are initializing this error variable with a message called. Your age does not permit to swim, age must be about 10 or below 60. And if user uses this no parameter constructor, we will display this message. If user creates object of not allowed to swim exception and passes his and want to pass his own exception message as argument, for that we are giving this constructor. The error is assigned to class instance variable to single print it. And to write user defined exception, what all we must do? We must write a class that, ex that extends from exception class. One string error variable must be declared, one no parameter constructor, one parameter constructor must be written, and one two string method must be written. Fine. How to use them? How to use this exception? Public class swimmer admission. Public class swimmer admission. This class is having one method called allow to swim. In this, we are taking string name and int as a parameter. Allow to swim method. Uh, the written type of the method is boolean. This is the method name. Allow to swim is the method name. Written type is boolean. The allow to swim method we are taking is checking 
if a is less than 10 or greater than or equal to 60 less than or equal to 10 and 10 including 10 including 60 if a is then we are immediately throwing throw new not allowed some exception if you use no argument constructor what happens this default exception message will be displayed otherwise if you pass your own exception message throw new not allowed some exception admission rejected this is the second constructor we are using so using throw class with new operator and with exception class constructor we are creating exception object and we are throwing this is called as this is called as raising exception because our method raises exception under particular condition as a developer of uh, this elodis method as a developer of this method it is our responsibility to report the exception this exception how using throws not allowed and it's already here, allowed to swim exception the developer who is writing this method is responsible for both raising the exception and as less or reporting the exception should both he raise exception but he should report the exception also report the exception then otherwise flag is equal to by default flag is false if the a is permits the flag is equal to true written true under written flag and the method may return true or may throw exception. False won't come. False means exception. Hmm? We have to use this method. We are using method here. In the public static void pane, we created a summary admission class object. And which method are we calling? Allotus method we are calling. We are taking two command line arguments, racks of 0, its name, racks of 1, it is an age. Because a rocks of one command line arguments are strings to convert A's into integer, we are using wrapper class integer dot parsing. So first argument is string name, second argument is A's. So those two are parsing arguments. But from here like this, A B C nine X Y Z ten M N O twelve P Q R fifty nine U W sixteen. And this is name and this is A's. You properly pass, okay? Pass. Suppose if you pass A B C, hmm. And uh, XYZ if you pass. Name is okay. What is XYZ in place of A's? In place of A's, numeric value, if you pass string, then you will get this exception. If you pass number as a second argument, you will get an output. You will get an output. The one wrong a test case also I should write here. Hmm. Okay, anyway. The method written is boolean that we are printing. And when you write a program, when you write this program without writing try catch block. Without writing all these try catch blocks, if you try to write, you compile your program, your compiler will force you, says that allotism method is reporting, uh, not allotism exception, but you didn't kept your, uh, this method uses statement in a try catch block with catch with these exceptions so and so, you please handle exceptions. So immediately then we must enclose the, the method used block of statement in a try catch block. In the catch, we are handling with the, uh, not allowed to some exception if that exception comes. Other than that, if any other exception comes to handle that, we are writing generic exception, catch exception. And finally, is a last block, last block that can be written, not that should be written, that can be written inside the method. In a method, we can write finally as a last block of this thing, last block of the method that executes both in normal termination of the method and as less in abnormal termination of the method, the block of code written in the finally block will execute and then from there the method will exit. And the finally could be the last block in every method's logic that executes both in normal termination of the method execution and as well as abnormal termination of the method execution. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.